Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope everything is good and great and wonderful. My hair is going to be an absolute disaster by the time this quarantine is over. I just, we just heard today that schools are out uh, at least until April 20th. So that probably means my job is also out until at least April 20th. We're working from home. And if places are closed, my, I have super thick hair. And whatever, that's not the point. The point of this video is I got the rest of the supplies that, uh, if you remember yesterday, I got a package containing a small tube of black oil-based printing ink, and I knew that there was more coming and it came today. Uh, that is not this. This is a mirror that I used for inking and a brayer for, you know, um, but that brayer is super rubbery. So the one that should be in here that Chris sent us is um, a little bit more, a little bit harder rubber. And so I'm really excited to try these guys as well as this. This I'm super excited about. So when I bought um, these carving tools that I got at Michael's, they were like 17 bucks and they're okay. I got them working. Let's put it that way. Um, but what I really had wanted was this set from a company called FlexCut, and this is their lino and relief printmaking set. Um, these are good for just about any um, carving. It doesn't have to be linoleum. Uh, these work great for wood also. Um, so, the, but the reason that I wanted this set, and I, well... The reason I bought the $17 set was because they were available at that moment in time and I wanted to try them and they were also um, $17, whereas this was like 50 bucks. So thank you, Chris. But the real reason I wanted this set is because it comes with this cool little stropping block. And so this is a piece of wood that has the profiles of these cutters shaped into it so that I can strop these um, and get really super fine tips. Now I can tell by looking at this, oh gosh, these came ridiculously sharp. I shouldn't have to do any work on these at all. Um, the only thing I'm going to try to do is make new handles. Th these handles are like, you can get it comes with one handle, and these are quick change, like, stick this in there and cut. But um, they sell these, like, almost $60 for three extra handles to fit the four tools that came with the set. And I'm, I'm not feeling that. So I'm going to probably try to make my own handles. Um, so this came from Chris. It comes with its own stropping block and its own stropping compound that fit the tools that are in this pouch. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Chris. I, you're amazing. Thank you. Um, oh, and then we got, that's probably really loud in the microphone, sorry about that. We got a set of brayers, um, big, little, medium, and the one that I have is like a little smaller than the print that I was doing, so I wanted a bigger one that I could just bam and get the whole thing in one go. Okay, so all that out of the way, thank you very, 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 very much, Chris, that's amazing. I got inspired yesterday, and... Um, I'll link it probably like in the corner or something, uh, but also in the description. Um, David Picciuto from the Make Something channel put up a video talking about his laser cutter and why it's cool, and he has a couple of them and talked about the differences. And in the end, in the middle of that video, he made this project, and I was inspired by it because I thought it was a cool-looking project, but I don't have a laser. But this project that he made was just cutting circles out of acrylic, colored acrylic. And so yesterday I thought, I can make that with my drill press and some Forstner bits and some plywood. So I did. Um, and I came down here and I made this in like maybe an hour and a half, two hours. And that includes making the frame and everything. It's essentially three pieces of plywood. Uh, one's painted yellow, one's painted blue, one painted white. I'm going to redo the blue layer in this so that it's got more yellow showing through. I don't like the way it turned out, but I did this in like 
hour and a half, two hours tops, again, including making this maple uh, frame. And when I started this project, I was like, oh, I'm going to film it. I'm going to make a YouTube video. I haven't done a build video in forever. I brought my GoPro down here. I brought the camera down here. I had everything set up. And then I was just like, you know what? I don't, I don't feel like dealing with this. I don't, it's, it's, I knew that this was going to be like an hour and a half, two hour project. And that was it. And so turning the camera on and making this out to be a three or four hour filming build video, trying to get everything set up right. I just didn't want to deal with it. So I didn't. And I so much didn't deal with it that I just made it. And I've been thinking a lot about that lately. And I've talked to him about it. I really do miss making build videos. I have all of the footage from the dresser that I'm probably going to edit during this stay at home time. Because what else am I going to do? Um, and I would like to really start doing more build videos. She said she would film. But um, holding a camera steady is not easy. And I don't necessarily want it to sit on a tripod. So I'm looking at getting a gimbal. And let me show you what I got. I have a couple of old Hero, I think this is a Hero 3. It says Hero Plus, which I think was like the 3 generation. Uh, this is a Hero 3 Plus for sure. I have a couple of little, gim little Heroes, little GoPros. And I would like to get a gimbal a three axis gimbal for her to hold on to that will basically turn this into a steady cam. And if I have that, we can go all over the shop and she can film it and I can get some good coverage. I can put this camera up, you know, to do wide shots or whatever as needed. But a lot of the build video shots would be done with this. And if I had had her in the shop yesterday with this, in a, in, a, in a gimbal, um, this wouldn't have taken me really any extra time, maybe a few minutes extra time just to tell her this is what I'm about to do, maybe film it this way or whatever. And I, so I would love to have that for her. I just, the problem is I don't know what to buy. I added a gimbal to my Amazon wish list because it has decent reviews. The company that, that I picked out has gimbals for like GoPros, cell phones, and compact cameras, and they have a couple thousand reviews amongst all of those that seems really good. It seems like a quality product, but I don't know if that's the truth. And so what I'm looking for is some advice. Have you used a gimbal with a GoPro? And if you have, or you have experience with three axis gimbals, what should I be looking for, for just doing not running shots, literally just, she's going to be standing still, but maybe doing some panning and stuff. What, what should I be looking for? And if you want to check out the Amazon wish list, what I put in there and tell me if that's a good one so that I can start, you know, putting money aside for it because uh, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to gimbals. I have all this camera equipment, but I've never used a gimbal. If you have access or if you have information, let me know. Or if you have a gimbal for a GoPro that you're willing to sell to me, uh, let me know that too. I'll buy it from you. That's what I have for you today. Um, did lots of work. Now it's chill time. Probably going to work down here some. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you tomorrow. The word of the day today is allegory. It is a noun meaning a story told to communicate a hitting, hidden meaning or deeper theme. Many of the Grimm Brothers fairy tales are clear allegories of the consequences of consequences of children's rotten behavior. Allegory. A-L-L-E-G-O-R-Y.